This is episode 120 of the Beyond the Food Show, and today we're going to talk about self-compassion and how self-compassion impacts our relationship to food. Crazy ball stuff. Are you ready for this, ladies? Let's do this. My name is Stephanie Dodier, clinical nutritionist. I reversed my diagnosis of anxiety, depression, adrenal fatigue, and obesity by going beyond the food. I can tell you one thing, that willpower, discipline, and deprivation aren't the permanent solution to transforming your relationship to food. So how do you leave overeating, emotional eating, food craving, and binging behind you so you have the food freedom to achieve all of your goal and be happy now? As a top 25 alternative health podcast in the world, this is the Beyond the Food Show. Hey ladies, this is Stephanie Dodier, and today we answer a question that actually came to me via a Facebook Live that I did last week. And the question was from Emily, and it was about her relationship to the scale and how the result on the scale made her feel and how she could work through that to have self-compassion. So it inspired me to do this whole show about self-compassion. And I'm going to share with you today how powerful self-compassion can be in relationship to food, weight, and self-worth in general, because without that, it is impossible for you to achieve your goal permanently. You'll get so far with beating yourself, and at some point, this whole discipline, willpower thing will like dissolve, and you'll go backwards. The only way for you to go forward from a place of permanent changes is with love, not with hate. And this is why it is so powerful and so important for us in our journey of going beyond the food to grow that skill that is self-compassion. And it's a practice. And I'll show you how to do that practice in the podcast today. But first, let me tell you a little story around me so you can see how self-compassion or lack thereof can affect you. So... In my personal journey, if you've listened to Podcast 101, you know I kind of had a hard knock upbringing, like nothing like the Jay-Z song where I was like born in poverty or living in the ghetto. That was nothing of that. But I was handle a set of cards in my life in which tough love was how I was brought up. I was brought up in an environment of kind of a military upbringing where compassion and understanding was something that... I was rarely a customer of. By that, I mean my parent did not show us compassion, not because they were malicious and they didn't want us to be compassionate individual, but as opposed, they didn't know what compassion was for themselves. So as a result of that, tough love was kind of a subconscious programming for me. And what happened to me as I grew up is that tough love that I was brought up into was an expectation that I had of the world. I was expecting that from me. I was giving tough love to myself. I was giving tough love to the people who work for me because I had a lot of people who work for me. And one of the things I was recognized for is tough love. And that's how I became this type A person of working hard and expecting a lot and achieving a lot. So when I came to that place of being sick and having to discover this whole other world, among it was self-compassion, it was extremely difficult for me to wrap my head around what the heck was self-compassion and how self-compassion can actually lead you to permanent changes. So ladies, I get it. I get it how difficult it is. So if you're struggling with it right now, no that it can change, but it requires this reprogramming of your belief, of your internal belief. And one of the way to do that is through practice. So that's what we're going to talk about a little bit later in the podcast. But first, let's make sure we all understand what self-compassion is. 
And for us to understand what self-compassion is, we need to first understand compassion. So compassion kind of comes in three-step process. Number one, when we have compassion, we are aware of the suffering of others around us. So if we have compassion for someone in our life, we are aware that they are suffering. Second, we are feeling, we are being moved by their suffering. We feel the warmth and the desire to care for them. And then three, very important, we are able to put that into perspective and realizing that the suffering that they're going through right now is part of a bigger human experience that we are not attached to it because it's from the other. We are able to put it into perspective, right? So that's what compassion is. Self-compassion is doing the same thing, the same three step but towards ourselves and our own story. So it's being aware that we're suffering, ability to feel that suffering and able to put it into perspective. Now, how does that help with our relationship to food? We're gonna take a quick break from our chat to give a shout out to our show sponsor, Health IQ. And I am so excited to be partnering with them and bringing you forward an innovative insurance company for the American listener. Health IQ helps health conscious people like yogis, runners, cyclists, weightlifters to get lower rate on their life insurance. Just like you save money on your car insurance for being a good driver, Health IQ saves you money on life insurance for living a health conscious lifestyle. Isn't it time that we get rewarded for our good health choices? Now, how do you get started? Very simply by qualifying through the health IQ quizzes. And also, listen to this, if you submit actual training data through the various apps available, you can save additional dollars. To get started now, simply go to stephaniedodzie.com forward slash health IQ and take the test to see if you qualify. And when you get to speak to an agent, mention the code beyond the food to support the show. So get started now on saving money on your life insurance. Now a shout out to our other show sponsor, Muse. And I'm very grateful to team up with Muse to bring you the first tool in the world to help you learn to meditate at home. Muse is a wearable brain sensing headband that measure our brain wave and sends the feedback to an app on our personal device. I love my Muse because it transform my meditation practice. I wear it daily for my 10 minute session in the morning and it coaches me through my practice by giving me real time feedback on what's happening in my brain and helping me refocus during my meditation. I love this partnership with Muse because it brings the tool to the first timer and it helps expand the practice of the more advanced meditator. So it's time for you to get your Muse on and learn to calm your mind through meditation. And here's the thing, as a listener of the Going to Beyond the Food show, you get 15% off of the purchase of your Muse. To take advantage of this offer, simply go to Stephanie Dodier dot com forward slash muse. And again, the URL is stephaniedodzie.com forward slash muse and register through this URL to get 15% off. So join me in my 10 minutes meditation practice every morning and get our muse on and go beyond the food together. So here's a first thing I want you to put into perspective. And that's a quote from Dr. Kristen Neff. And I put the link to the website of Dr. Neff in the show note at stephaniedodzie.com slash 120. Dr. Neff is a researcher, a PhD, and her entire life's work is around self-compassion. So she has this amazing website. So if you want some help with self-compassion, you can go to her website. She's got a ton of exercise, a ton of perspective for you to understand. But she says this. Instead of mercilessly judging and criticizing yourself for your various inadequacy or shortcoming, self-compassion means that you are kind and understanding when confronted with personal failing. 
after all, who's ever said you were supposed to be perfect? And if you've been through my podcast before, my free webinar, and then one of my course, you know that the whole self-sabotage, overeating, emotional eating behavior comes from this place of perfection, right? The, the desire for us to be perfect in different part of our lives that drive the behavior of overeating. So for an example, if you were to go onto a binge or an overeating period, you would normally be totally unconscious. You would just be stuffing yourself to the point where you would feel physically uncomfortable. And then the whole cycle of shame and guilt and how bad you are and how undisciplined and no willpower you have would like get in and you would get into that cycle of shame and guilt. With self-compassion, and the understanding of the beyond the food method, it would more look like this. So you're sitting in front of the TV and you're overeating on the forbidden food, or whatever you're overeating on. And then because you practice awareness in your day-to-day -day life and general mindfulness or awareness, you all of a sudden become aware of what you're doing, sitting in front of the TV, eating an entire bar of chocolate. And you don't impose yourself to stop right away and start judging and criticizing yourself. But instead, you become aware of what you're doing and you're gradually slowing down and taking a breath and realizing and sitting in to that moment of emotional eating or binging or overeating and feeling the pain or the situation, the stress, the trigger that got you there without judging or criticizing yourself. So the new type of self-talk that would be going on in your head with self-compassion could look like this. Sitting in the living room, becoming aware that you're eating, in my case, the entire bag of chip, and then you would say, oh my God, I get it. So much pressure on you right now. It's not easy. Your husband is gone and you have the kids and you have the activity and then work. Let's not talk about how your boss is pushing that deadline down your throat. Oh my God, your plate is full, girl. No wonder why you need to comfort yourself. And it's normal, girl, to comfort yourself. Like you need to feel better because you feel so bad right now. And right now, what you know is food. So you're eating that entire bag of chip right now. We'll work together on finding a way to suit yourself differently in the future. I love you. That would be the self-talk that would be going on if you were to practice compassion. Now, right away, some of you are saying, and I can hear that energetically, <laughs> well, if I say that to myself, I give myself a permission to eat the entire bag of chips. And that's self-pity. I don't want to give that to myself. Well, there's a very different thing between self-pity and authorization of bad behavior instead of understanding and putting it into perspective. Understand why you're having this behavior is because right now in your life, the skill that you know to make you feel better is food. And you haven't yet developed another practice of soothing. So what you are left with is what your subconscious mind knows is eating, is connecting, feeling better with food. So no wonder why you're reacting like this. And here's the thing, you're a human. If you give yourself hate, criticizing and judging because of the fact that you're eating right now and overeating, you're going to fall into that cycle of shame and guilt. But if you give yourself love, self-compassion, not self-pity, but love, I am telling you and research is showing that behavior will wind down and will care for itself because you give you love the same way when you give compassion to other people. So how do we begin to shift this self-talk, this thinking, this self-compassion ability that we're currently struggling with? Number one step, you need to agree that you need to change. 
If you are not in agreement with anything that I say today and you're still, your ego right now is telling you how bad this is, like if you attended any of my course, my webinar, you know right now your comfort zone is telling you, oh my God, we can't do this, right? If that's happening right now, realize it's only your ego, wait. But if you're agreeing with me that you need to change, the first thing you need to do is become aware of your critical voice. Become aware of the self-talk that's going on in your head. Practice mindfulness of any kind. It can be meditation. It can be walk in nature. Like Get to a place where you can listen to your self-talk by practicing awareness. Two, you can do exercise like Dr. Neff has on her site, which is a third-party role. We do the same thing in the Self-Sabotage Masterclass in the Beyond the Food Academy, where we write a letter as a third party, as an observer on our own behavior. So think about one imperfection in your life that's making you feel inadequate right now. Recall it and then take your journal, take a piece of paper and write a letter to yourself from the perspective of your best friend, somebody who has your best interests at heart, somebody who would give you compassion, and look at this imperfection from that angle. What would that person tell you? What would that person do? And realize that you can do the same thing for yourself. And this is how you can start your own work towards self-compassion. Now, Self-compassion is work because right now, if you don't give it to yourself, it's because you've been programmed, just like I shared in my story, to not give it to yourself. So it will take time, it will take practice, but you can do it. So there you have it. That's what self-compassion lesson is all about. That's the basic. I'm grateful that you stick with me till the end. And I want you to do two things for me. Number one, I want you to share this episode with someone in your life that you know does not practice self-compassion. Just as a forward the episode, the show note to and say, hey, check this out. I think this is good. And see if you can impact her life as well. Two, you can subscribe to the show. So you, we can send you automatic update and you can leave us a review. I would really appreciate a review because it's like my fuel is hearing from you. I love you and I look forward to see you on the next show. Did you know that nine out of 10 women are struggling with their relationship to food? Overeating, emotional eating, binging and craving are real. Clearly the solution we have been thought aren't working. I believe to have food freedom, it means that we must learn to have a relationship with our hunger so we can finally be at peace with food and eat normally without guilt or shame, which is why I wrote the Crave Cure Guide. I want to show you how to have a completely different relationship with food so that you can be in control of what you eat, achieve your goal, and be the powerful woman you were meant to be. The best part is this book and the step-by-step process is absolutely free. To receive your free copy, simply go to stephaniedodzie.com forward slash guide and we can get started right now.